Hello and welcome to AES 2019. I am Peter Schneider. I'm here with John Tatools. John. Good to see you, Peter. Good to see you. Thank you for hosting us in your booth. Well, thank you for hosting us in your city. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're here to talk about what's new for you guys. Yeah. Uh, so version 3.0 right. of the firmware. Um, can you run down some of the features? Right, couple things. So the Scorpio and the 833 are a new architecture for us. So this is a, started out at NAB when we introduced Scorpio. And then at IBC in September, we introduced the A33. And when they first came out, they were very powerful tools. They had a pretty complete feature set, but these are very powerful hardware, so we're capable of adding new tools to it. So a couple of the new tools we've introduced with this most ver current version, which mm -hmm. is 3.0, uh, first is support for the CL12. So the CL12 is a popular controller for the 688, also is controls the 664 and 633. There's a, a good install base of these out there uh, and in rental. And yeah. when we first came out with Scorpio, uh, we, we support third-party MCU controllers, yes. which are very capable. But there's a legacy customer that wanted to use that CL12 with Scorpio. And we were able to do that. It took us some time to figure out how to do that, but we are able to control the Scorpio with a CL12. Can you kind of give us a, a broad overview of, of some of the things you can control? You know, so the, so the main tools are going to be menu controls, some of the shortcuts, right. and, and your fader control. Uh -huh. So just like with the CL12 interconnecting with the 688, you've got your faders, right. uh, your, your local trims will still be controlled at the unit itself. Got it. But you've got your fader controls here. Okay. You've got your, your shortcuts to routing, You've got metering of individual channels. Those are all presented on the CL12. Nice, nice. That's great. So really, like it, it's almost like it's native. Right. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, what, what else is in 3.0? 3.0 also offers recording of an AAC file. So many customers wanted to have a compressed file that could include timecode for got transcription it. applications. And AAC is you know kind of the modern equivalent of an MP3 file. Yes. And it's a... Uh, it's, it's a very high quality compressed format, and in the header information we have timecode and, and the timecode metadata embedded into that. Do you work with transcript uh, houses? We did, in fact, uh, we reached out to transcript houses directly, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them already accept these with no troubles, a few, few of them, uh, there were some minor technical things that we were investigating to make these work and be compatible. Right. Uh, some are less responsive to us and we're, we're trying to reach out to them and, right. uh, and, and see you know, as they evolve from MP3 files into other compressed formats, Got how it. well they accept AAC. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a nice format, it sounds good. I don't know if you've ever listened to our MP3 files, they were they were not a, a great sounding MP3 file, they were fine for transcription. Right. The AC file is a full fidelity file. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, interesting, all right, and, and what else? Uh, another tool that's on the, the Scorpio and the A33 is Mix Assist. So we brought Dugan to the Scorpio in, when the A33 was introduced. Yes. And that's an available auto mixing algorithm. But a lot of customers also like Mix Assist, because Mix Assist operates differently. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more aggressive in its nature. The attenuation is more uh, dramatic on, a and on not addressed microphones. So for PA applications, live stream applications, Mix right. Assist yeah. is, a, is a very useful tool. Yes. And there's a variable off attenuation for unused microphones. So that's something you can dial in just mm -hmm. like you could in other Mix Assist implementations. Sweet. So we brought that now to it. Uh, awesome. A couple of other things, we have horizontal metering on the Scorpio. Uh, some other usability things, so we're constantly listening to our customers and, and how they're working with the products and bringing that and infusing the products with their feedback. Nice. Did I see something about battery telemetry? Right, yeah, so the, uh, the smart batteries, you know, as, as you know, we changed the connection to the TA4 style connector. Yes. Uh, we're using the, the, the smart battery and that telemetry that's available from these smart batteries and we have visibility of that in the setup menu, at the power menu, and then also when powering, there's an estimate of what your runtime is. And uh, do our customers need to be aware of what brand of battery or what kind of um, cup that they're using? 
Is there something special about the wiring? You know, the, uh, any the, brand? The, the cups, uh, certainly from us, if mm -hmm. they're getting a Sound Devices battery, uh, or the Inspire Energy battery, which is uh, you know, directly compatible with ours. Good. Uh, we, we know that those are operating correctly. Got it. Uh, other third-party batteries that may be in that exact same form factor, uh, you know, we'll, we'll qualify those over time and as we okay. look at those. All right, excellent. Um, terrific, uh, any, anything else to let our customers know that's new? You know, I would say, you know, make certain to keep up to date with firmware. Yeah. Uh, we're always adding usability, improvements, uh, but just importantly, bug, bug fixes. Uh -huh. If you look at how deep the menu is in these products and how many different combinations and how many tools that are presented, uh, you know, we, we do hear that, oh, in this situation with this specific topology and this here, I'm, uh, you know, I'd love it for it to do this. Well, you know, fortunately we can oftentimes respond to that and, and uh -huh. include that in a future version of firmware. All right, excellent. Well, uh, great. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.